Arlequino is still in beta and she's been changed more often than I have mood swings when I'm off my meds on a Tuesday night. So, with Kazuha on the current banner, you may be wondering, is he necessary for Boot Hill Arlequino to cleave Archons in two? The short answer is no. The long answer is no. But it may not be a bad idea. For a quick overview, Kazuha sucks. Literally, not figuratively. Meta-wise, he's pretty good. Kazuha's E can be tapped or held for a jump into a plunge, which applies Animo on the way up and again on the way down. His burst also applies Animo on the initial slash, then infuses an element for 5 additional damage over time ticks of the infused element and more Animo damage. It's also great for when you don't want to see anything more than 2.5 meters away in any given direction. That's a little over 8 feet in freedom units. With these two abilities, he can facilitate a lot of double swirl setups, which is great for times when you want to do a lot of pyro and hydro damage. This means holding the Veritas and Venera set can reduce enemy resistances of both elements swirled, and on top of that, his Ascension 4 passive is massive, giving a 0.04% elemental damage bonus per point of elemental mastery he has. To make that number easier to digest, it's a 40% damage buff at 1000 EM. If that's an ambitious figure for you, at 800 EM, it's still a girthy 32%. If that's still an ambitious figure for you, try harder. Mama didn't raise no quitter. Even if Arlequino wasn't a factor, he can be slotted into almost any team that benefits from an animo unit, and even some teams that don't, just because of the utility in his grouping. He's a can-do dude with a can-do tood. He only has one big problem. A lot of people skipped Kazuha in his debut because many said he was just a 5-star Sucrose. Incidentally, 4-star Sucrose is pretty sweet to have. And to this day, she can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kazaha under the right conditions. When she swirls an element, she grants 50 elemental mastery to characters in your party matching that element. Her Ascension 4 passive grants additional EM to your entire party equal to 20% of her elemental mastery stat when she hits an enemy with her skill or burst. Her grouping may not be quite as strong and her burst can occasionally actively grief you, but being a Catalyst user means she can almost swirl on demand with her normal attacks and hold Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers to make your next unit swole AF. She also has the unique ability to go up a swirl, but this video is for Arlequino, so this ain't about him. So, between Kazuha and Sucrose, the question becomes, do I want a bigger elemental damage bonus, or do I want more elemental mastery for stronger reactions? And as always, it depends. Some of the team options I've seen floating around include Overload, Melt, Vaporize, Pure Pyro, and a plethora of parties at least partially applicably pertinent. Starting with the easiest team to tackle, if you had to choose between Kazuha or Sucrose for Overload, the obvious choice is... Neither. Chevers is possessive of her power and electro posse and refuses to work with any other elements. You can try to run Overload with an Animo unit in place of Chevrus, but the rotations are more rigid, swirling is a bit trickier because the alternative doesn't have swirling at all, and unless you're using Venti, this is all with the added inconvenience of chasing down enemies you blast into yesterday's next week, which feels especially bad if you're trying to stay within the warm embrace of Bennett's boundaries. I'd rather spend a full day in the office with my boss. He doesn't give me days off, I don't get lunch breaks, the pay is terrible, and he touches me inappropriately. Chevrus doesn't necessarily fix the knockback on Overload, but because she has a pretty strong attack buff with a very simple activation condition, you can justify not bringing Bennett and your damage will still feel relevant. The next team is Pure Pyro. The only reaction in this team is Swirl. This makes Kazuha the obvious winner. Or does it? If you're using Sacrificial Fragments on Sucrose, she's actually quite a bit behind. Swapping her to TTDS limits your rotational flexibility, as she has to go directly before Arlequino now, but doing so shoots Arlequino's personal damage to just about the same level as it is in the Kazuha team. Man, tids are great. Still, team-wise, we're not that close yet. At C6, however, if you can use Sucrose's burst every rotation and consistently absorb Pyro into it, you can pass Arlequino another 20% Pyro damage, which pushes Arlequino's personal damage higher than in the Kazuha variant, with the team's DPS trailing less than 2% behind. Harmless sweetie, my ass. Swiggity swooty, she's coming for that booty. With this in mind, you'll need to build a bit of energy recharge on her, which isn't too problematic. You can afford to cut down on EM since her EM sharing ability in this team is about as useful as I am. Vaporize is an interesting topic to cover because... there's a lot of it. We'll be talking specifically about Reverse Vaporize for this, since I think most people want their Arlequino to be their heavy hitter, but I do plan to cover a number of different playstyles after Arlequino's official release, which will be happening shortly before, and probably also after, and maybe even during my release. I am blowing my entire load on that banner. So Reverse Vaporize is a little complicated because your triggering unit wants elemental damage, but they also want elemental mastery. Sometimes the value of one outweighs the other. So to figure this out, I decided to go with Bennett and Yelan, cause... And then our animo unit in question. No, I did not use Singcho. He's great, but I'm sick of him and I just want him to leave me alone. The only way he manages to get on my teams as of late is because my eyesight is bad and I keep thinking he's Farina. So with our team established, I tried out a bunch of different double swirl setups, recorded them, took some of Arlequino's leaked footage, threw it all into Adobe Premiere, spliced it up, blah blah blah, cool story bro, and then I found $5. After that, I tried to figure out how I wanted to handle her field time, and I decided to settle on a charged attack to start the bond up, and 5N3D as my working combo. That is, 3 normal attacks and a dash cancel 5 times. There are other higher outputs for combos utilizing her 4th and or 5th normal attacks, but this team lacks any defensive utility outside of Arlequino's passive. 
and in a realistic setting, you'll probably have to dodge a lot. The alternative is to play like I do and let the enemy use your face as a trampoline. As a general disclaimer, I am not a theory crafter. I am a simple chimp that simply simps and pulls until his wimp is limp. All I know is how to bang on a keyboard and make numbers appear on a spreadsheet. Additionally, this method of analyzing frame data is imperfect because I'm using setups that I've performed and I'm sprinkled with all sorts of skill issue. I'm also using footage from leakers, so I don't know what can or cannot be canceled early. Hit lag extensions are not accounted for, and I'm assuming standard ICD on her normal attacks, but I don't know things like the application gauge on her skill and burst, nor do I know if her burst snapshots at the start of the cast, but for now, I assume it does. Take these with a grain of salt. I've tried several rotations and found the ones on screen to be my favorite. That's not to say these are ideal, only the ones that made sense to me at the time I threw this video together. There may be a number of other viable or more optimal options that my smooth brain couldn't construct, but I found with most of them, you get about an 18 second rotation if you don't use Arlequino's burst and keep your timings tight. If you do use her burst, the rotations bump up to about 20 to 21 seconds long. On the topic of her burst, my patch is ruined and my disappointment is immeasurable. On the first rotation, using her burst or not using her burst yields about the same DPS. If something lasts for more than one rotation, it's better to not burst. Just in case you don't know how her bond of life mechanic works, you bully things with her E, you let them cook for about 5 seconds, you bully them again with the charged attack, and you collect the cookings in the form of bond of life. The maximum bond you can get per E cast is 145%. If you are above 30% bond of life, you gain a 40% pyro damage bonus and pyro infusion. When you do a normal attack, this bond is taken into account and included in your attack multiplier. The more bond you have, the more damage you do. As you hit the enemy, you lose some bond. On a single target, you generate about 130% bond when you E, wait 5 seconds, and pop a charged attack. 15 hits later, you'll drop to about 43% bond. If you burst, this bond gets eaten and you get healed. If you do not burst, you can carry this bond over into your next rotation. Instead of starting at 130% on a single target, you'll be pogging off at 173% instead. Your normal attacks will hit harder and continue to do so rotation over rotation until you hit a starting bond of 200%. Your burst should only be used if you need to heal, otherwise your damage will drop off just like I did after high school. In any event, that's not going to stop me from using it because I can't read. Using Kazuha, Arlequino's personal damage per second is pretty good. With Sucrose instead, we find it's actually similar. This is, however, misleading. Arlequino isn't the only source of damage. Yelan brings a pretty significant portion to the table, and giving her more EM doesn't do her any good since she's not triggering any reactions. If we look at the full party's damage spread, Kazuha pulls ahead as his elemental damage buff doesn't care if you react or not. However, if you want to see even higher Arlequino numbers, you can use Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers on Sucrose. This one comes with some caveats. Using Sucrose's skill to swirl away the Hydro Elon left to set up swirling your Pyro means you buff Bennett with TTDS instead. To work around this, I molded. The only way I could reasonably double swirl and put the TTDS buff on Arlequino without resorting to Singjo was to clear Yelan's Hydra with Bennett's burst and a hold E. This reapplies Pyro so Sucrose can swirl it off, but the extended action of Bennett's held skill cuts into Yelan's and Bennett's burst uptime, meaning you might find yourself running a little dry towards the end of your rotation. That being said, this is a high-end estimate and likely not indicative of practical scenarios. There is also a chance this works out better in practice. Arlequino's skill should apply some pyro after about 5 seconds from its initial use. With some minor adjustments, it may be possible to swirl off this application instead of having to hold Bennett's E. I will explore this further when she's released for real. If all that sounds about as comfortable as knaves on a chalkboard, I don't blame you. I found that using sacrificial fragments instead is more comfortable. I don't have to worry about putting Arlequino directly after Sucrose, it gives Sucrose a little more EM for a slightly larger EM buff, and with TTDS, you need a 20 second rotation at minimum, whereas sac frags lets you trim it down to 18. As for Melt, I don't recommend it. Setups feel even more strict and the uptime you get on your Cryo Aura isn't very impressive, causing you to run out of melts pretty early on. There are a lot of setups you can try, but this is something I'd rather wait until her release for, since it's easier to eat through Cryo Auras with Pyro application and it's a little hard for me to try to figure out how consistent you'll be able to get your reactions. So if you had to choose between Kazuha and Sucrose, the obvious answer is Zhongli. One big problem with my vape setups was the lack of resistance, interruption, and defensive utility. Double Swirl Vape setups are somewhat easy to disrupt, causing you to either miss out on a swirl or choose a recovery option that's less than ideal. And since Arlequino doesn't heal from Bennett's Circle, there is a non-zero possibility you just die. Especially since Bennett's Circle slaps Pyro on you and then my how the turns have tabled. My calculations assume you burst with Arlequino every other rotation, but some enemies are particularly aggressive and you may need it more often than that. If, like me, you suffer from excessive skill issue and it's ruining your confidence in the bedroom leaving both you and your partner frustrated, you do have the option to build enough ER to burst every rotation. However, this is not a good option. That ER isn't free it's likely to cost you some offensive substats. Without the bond of life you accrue over several rotations, in addition to missing out on up to 7 crit substats, you're better off just running Zhongli or another shielder over your animo unit instead. If you're not willing to make that compromise, but you're still bad at the game, simply don't be. 
100% of problems are solved by not having those problems. And you can alternatively use Singcho, but I find swirling with him to be a little dank because his orbitals can mess with your pyro application. To reiterate, a lot of this is speculative and I made a lot of assumptions. This is probably not 100% accurate, so keep that in mind when making your decisions. Back to Sucrose and Kazuha, it's not really a question I can answer for you. Outside of theoretical performance, an important thing to consider is their availability and flexibility in other parties and content. You may already have Sucrose. Pulls you don't use on Kazuha could be used on Arlecchino, her weapon, or her constellations instead. However, Kazuha is a valuable unit outside of Arlecchino teams. If you want to run two teams that could utilize a VV Shredder, having both Sucrose and Kazuha could be beneficial for you. Though, with all of the team options we have available now, I think most people aren't hard-pressed for two separate Animo units these days. Then there's the element of Open World, where Kazuha's ability to double jump can be pretty valuable for vertical travel. Whatever you decide, I hope your pulls go well, and thanks for listening to my Arlecchino Arla Keynote. If you're still listening, here's something you can do to piss off every Arlecchino main. Arlecchino. <laughs> Yeehaw. Just the two of Lazarus. We can make it if we try. Thanks, channel members. You guys bought me a burrito. I am a simple chimp that simply simps and pulls until his wimp is limp. That was the first try. Was that good? And a plethora of parties at least partially... And a plethora of parties at least partially applicably... At least partially applicably... Pertinent. Pertinent. Okay. At least partially applicably... Man, I suck at speaking. Why do I put tongue twisters in things? And a plethora of parties at least partially applicably pertinent. I did it.